Howdy YouTube and welcome to this episode of The Gunman. So today we're going to be doing a review and demo on the Anestai Wada Bellaria. So it's actually something that I have done before. I do have quite a few videos of this gun up on my channel. However, this gun here is a limited edition version of that gun. So Woody is the edition. And when I first saw it, I didn't think too much of it. I thought, oh, it's a bit basic. But then it really did start growing on me. I like the fact that it's subtle. I actually think that the standard edition itself without anything on it looked quite good. I do really like the brown highlights on the chrome body gun. This one here is my standard edition. So as you can see down the base of the gun, that's a 2017 model. That's something that the Bellarias have on them down the base of the gun and they've got the build year and then two gun identifiers. So YC is on the Woody edition and I think it was UG on my original Bellaria. So they're just to identify the guns by. That's all they are. So that the UG and the YC don't actually really mean anything. As well, to, to the best of my knowledge, anyway, I've always thought they were just gun identifiers. So you could have like five or six of these guns from the same build year, but you would be able to identify them because they've got those letters on the base of the gun. So the first thing I always do when I get a new gun is take it up to my extraction fan and check the spray pattern on the gun to make sure it's spraying well and as you would have expected from a gun like this it is spraying spot on also i've got a couple of anesto water az3 hts impact guns so they're more of a budget spec gun than this this is sort of more of a mid-range gun and i had two of those az3s come in and both of them had imperfect spray fans on them so yeah, straight away I looked at this gun and I'm like, yep, we're on to a winner. So these things are actually made in Japan. As you would expect, the Japanese are very good engineers and precision made tools. It's one of those things that like you just open the box, you look at this and you know you've got a really well made tool in your hand. You wouldn't even have to be a spray painter. Like I could put this next to those AZ3s and like a kid could say, well, that's the better tool. That's the one that's better made. So these go for around oh, three or 400 Australian dollars. Don't quote me on that because where you get it from and your exchange rates will vary the price. But yeah, like if you're paying much over $400, you're probably paying a bit too much. Like I wouldn't pay more than 450. Uh, that's pretty much the top I would go for one of these guns, but for a gun of that price, they really do a really nice job. Like they're capable of spraying base coats, clear coats, primers, sealers, anything you can throw in it, it will spray. Another thing I like about these guns here is that they have a really wide range of fluid tips available. That's something that I actually didn't even know until I started to have a look on Spray Guns Direct website, which is where I got this gun just for reference. So yeah, if you, if you do want that one, there will be a link in the description of where to get one. And we're actually going to do a giveaway on this gun too, one of these guns too. So yeah, a brand new one, not this actual spray gun. But yeah, if you hang around to the end of the video, I'll give you guys the details on how to win one. As far as fluid tips go, I would say 1.3 is probably going to be the best all-rounder for most people looking at using the gun for base coat and clear coats. So you might find that it's a little bit too fast in the winter. You can wind that fluid in if you really need to and that will slow it down a little bit, but then you can open it right up in the warmer months and you'll have a nice fast gun on your hands. 1.4 is probably a little bit overkill for this gun here, and 1.2 is maybe a little bit more restricting. However, if you're spraying in the colder months or in like a colder environment, you might actually find that 1.2 is better suited for you. And on the other hand, if you're living in the middle of the desert, like the ultra dry heat, you might find that the 1.4 is going to be the right tip for you where you really need to get that high amount of fluid on really quickly. And when I actually got the last Bellaria, I got that originally when I was doing my primer gun review and I got that in a 1.8. And then when I was updating my top 10 spray gun review, I thought, hey, I would like to get some new footage of my Bellaria but I didn't have a 1.3. So I actually sent an email to Spray Guns Direct. I said, hey, can you get me down a 1.3 for my Bellaria? So they were able to send down a 1.3 needle and tip, but I was able to use the, the exact same gun and I didn't even have to change the air cap. So that's probably something that's worth noting. It's one of those things that you could use this gun for 
pretty much everything that you would mostly need. You know, you could use it for your base coats, clear coats, but then you could throw your 1.8 mil on for your high build primers. Personally, I do recommend having a separate gun for your high build primers, so a separate gun in 1.8 or 2 mil. It's just a lot more convenient that way. You don't have to fully strip the gun down between uses, and it just saves a bit of time. And look, at the end of the day, guns really aren't that expensive these days. You can get yourself a good quality primer gun, not the best on the market, but really quite a good one for around 200 Aussie dollars. So for the extra convenience, I'd like myself recommend just get an extra primer gun. But there, there you go. So this is this job here. It was like a Land Cruiser Prado. I actually did this one on a Saturday. I've always found the jobs come up a bit cleaner on the Saturday because you haven't got all the, the guys out in the workshop doing all their dry sanding and filling the workshop with dust. To be fair, there was a, a few bits of dust in that quarter panel, but the rest of the job really was quite clean. So I did this job first up on the Saturday. I actually prepped, color matched, uh, masked and painted this job and the next job in six and a half hours on a Saturday. I smashed it out. I was actually pretty proud of myself, man. Like, yeah, I, I look back at that and I'm like, yeah, I did well today, man. Like, um, So this is, like, I took the air cap up, off after spraying it and I just, I was marveling at the the level of detail in the machining. Like, as I was saying before, like, you know that that, you're looking at a good spray gun and you can just tell by looking at the parts that they have been machined to perfection like there is yeah really good quality lathes or really sharp uh machining tools that they've used to make this spray gun with so this car here is just a mitsubishi lancer but again smash this job out i actually wasn't planning on spraying this job that day i just thought i'll do a bit of prep work and i'm like man i'm on a roll why not i'll just keep going so I think I did the, some of the color. So the, the previous job that I did on that Land Cruiser, that was like a three-stage pearl. So you do get a little bit of downtime on those three-stage pearls in between coats. So I like to hit bake after I get all of my base coats down, hit bake for like 20 minutes and then let it cool down for another 10 minutes. So I gave it half an hour between base coat and clear coat. And I did a bit of the the edge masking on this one, the prep masking and got the color sorted and just sort of got the ball rolling on this one. And then, I don't know, I just kept going and I'm like, yeah, why not, man? I've gone this far. And yeah, using Stando Blue, the base coat system that we use at the moment, it really is quite a fast application. I've actually recently learnt a few little things about this system that has really unlocked some of the full potential of the system. So having an air screw compressor, I would say is like absolutely necessary. If you are got if you got this system here and you don't have yourself an air screw compressor, you are just gonna set yourself up for failure and extended wait times and drying times and, and stuff like that. Trust me, because I used to work in a shop that didn't have the air screw compressor, so they had like the old piston style compressor and they really can't keep up with those high pressure air blowers that we need to dry this base coat down with. One of the other things that I've learned about this system is to be ultra careful when you are doing spray out cards. So when I was doing um, Standox solvent and any solvent system, you're gonna get like um, maybe a five if that percent difference um, of color depending on the way you spray it. So you could go like a little bit heavier or a little bit lighter with the solvent and you'll get a very minor change in the color. Whereas this system here, if you go ever so slightly wetter or ever so slightly lighter, you will get a really, really big difference in the color. So look, I've learned don't even spray the colors out. Just choose a good chip and mix it and paint it. The only time I will ever spray these colors out is if there is no chip and I need to use a Spectro. But yeah, most of the time there actually is color chips I've found these days. So all these three colors that I did in this video, including this one, there was a color chip. So just mix it and paint it and blend, like blend everywhere. Don't go edge to edge unless you really have to. And even then, like if you do have to do spray out cards, do two sections on that spray out card. So we'll do like one section where you try to do your, your standard application, then another section where you put an extra coat over the top with a slightly different application and you will really see the two different color changes. So then I'll get that color card, look up to the car and say, hey, it's somewhere in between there. And if I spray it this way, this is what it's gonna look like. If it's sprayed this way, this is how it's gonna look like. So yeah, just uh, being aware how the colors can change depending on how you spray them on. 
Now, look, I've found that this Ballaria is not the best for spraying this water-based system. So, as I said before, Stando Blue, Speed's Hacker High Tech is actually the same stuff, and Chromax Pro is also the same stuff. So, I've just found that the Ballaria, for whatever reason, maybe it's just me, like I haven't used it extensively, but I have just found that it, it doesn't seem to get the metallics down quite as nice as my Pro Lights. But, yeah, as I say, maybe that is just me, but I hope you guys have been enjoying the 4K footage. I recently updated my camera, so we've got the GoPro 8 running at 4K. I'm also rendering all the videos in 4K now, so I can notice a improvement, so I hope you guys can too. But as I mentioned at the start of this video, if you guys would like to win yourself one of these Anast Iwata Ballarias, you can visit the website that I've created. There's a link in the description. Click that link, leave a comment. It can say anything, and after a week, I'm going to be drawing a lucky winner of the NS Iwata Ballaria Woody Edition. On the other hand, if you would like to go and buy one of these, there will also be a link to Spray Guns Direct website where you'll be able to buy one of these online, and they do ship worldwide. I'd like to say a big thanks to everyone for watching, and if you'd like to support the channel further, you're more than welcome to go over and check out some of the merchandise we've got. My personal favorite is those spray suits, so they're a good quality collab branded spray suit with a gunman logo on it there's also hats drink coolers hoodies and t-shirts so be sure to go over and check out the link in the description if you are interested all that aside i'd just like to say a big thanks for watching and that is enough to support the channel but as i say if you'd like to go the next step then be sure to check out some of that merchandise thanks for watching and until next time get out there and paint some shit gunman out